Hi, I'm Ed, this is Lead Follow, and this is the Unicorn X5. So, why is this a unicorn? It is a one owner car with full BMW service history. And that, that is a rare thing on a 20 year old car. Now these cars are getting popular, but also rare at the moment. People are realizing, thanks to people like Auto Alex, that they are actually good underrated cars. But sadly, mine has to go. I um, bought another car the other day. In this video, I'm gonna go through a few bits about this car, a few things to watch out for, and a few things I like, and just generally chatting about it. So we'll go and take it for a drive and um, let you see what you think. Now this is a car I never thought that I would get. I've wanted an, e5, an X5, I wanted an E53 one, but I wanted the diesel. I've ended up with a 4.4 litre V8. Now, why is that? It was part of a deal. I had a car a mate of mine wanted. He offered me some cash and this, and that's how it happened. And I'm not actually that angry about it. Although, the car is going, let's go off road. The air suspension does actually make it quite nice. Coming along here in my normal truck, I'm getting chucked about all over the place. So it is actually quite a nice experience in this. And with a grunt from the 4.4 litre, it, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's nice. The X5 should be quite good off-road because they did share a lot of development or stole a lot of the development from the Land Rover, Range Rover. Um, Oh, big bump in the Range Rover. So I've got hill descent mode, which I don't think anyone's ever used, but we've got a big hill coming up in a second and I think we'll give it a go. Okay, so let's try hill descent mode. Now, I think all we've got to do, put it into gear, uh, press, Hill descent mode, light is on. Oh, so I'm not touching any pedals. Um, you can feel the brakes are keep grabbing, like individual brakes as well. It's quite, it's a weird feeling. Um, we're doing what? I don't know, five miles an hour, and I'm just. Yeah, not touching anything, I'm just steering. And it's a, it's a weird feeling, it's just, it's bizarre, it's quite nice. So I'm just sort of cruising down, getting a bit bored now, because um, I can't go faster than this. But, yeah seems to work so let's uh just stop and take it out of hill descent mode and then just drive it normally there we go that's better off-road these things aren't great um this is a pre-facelift so the four-wheel drive system is 6238 or 6038 i don't know around that way um bias to the rear of the car um whereas the facelifts they can put 100 percent of power at any 20 axle so they're a bit better off-road so like with all cars they got good and bad points to them um now with the 4.4 or 4.6 or the 4.8 I think you can guess what the main bad point is, and that's the MPG. Um, driving sensibly, I can get about 22 to the gallon out of this, but it's 280 odd horsepower, 0 to 60 in about seven and a half seconds, and it's a big old car, so I don't hate it for that, I just don't enjoy putting petrol in it. Also, due to the size and weight of these things, they do eat rear suspension bushes, arms, on a regular basis. So, 
they're not the hardest things in the world to deal with, not the hardest things to change, but just be prepared to get that changed. Oh, I don't have to go down this bit. Oh, easy, easy. So, uh, yeah, there's a rear rose bush in the suspension arm that causes quite strange sensation, sort of wobbles the back end about. Change those, they're not expensive. Um, German, Swedish, French, GSF stock them. I've got Delphi ones for about 25 quid each. But make sure you buy the tool. The tool is 30 odd pounds off eBay and it makes the job 10 times easier than trying to use anything else. You just need the tool. Another issue to look out for on these is, well, thing to avoid really, is the sunroof. Um, they don't work that well after a while. There's bits of plastic in there, they snap off. They can open, but they can't shut sometimes. It's just a whole load of hassle that you don't really need. Um, a car this age, it's kind of good to have the less stuff you have on it, the less stuff that will go wrong. Things I've had to deal with on, on, these, on this car in particular is I had the passenger window regulator fail. Um, it's just the plastic bits that hold the window in place just snapped off and the window just, this is a bit bumpy, and the window just dropped into the door. Window regulators aren't expensive. Um, you can spend what you want to spend. Obviously OEM are going to be best, but it's horses, you know, you spend what you want to spend. Uh, you might have to do the job more if you buy cheaper ones, but it's not that much of a pain to do. Another issue I have um, is my boot latch. Uh, it doesn't work from the outside. It's an electrical switch on these. Um, I think after time moisture might get in, I don't know what has happened to it, but that doesn't work. Luckily the fob has a boot open button as to, and there's a button down here between behind the HVAC controls. So it's not the end of the world. It can be replaced. You can buy them off breakers and oh, this is really bumpy. You can buy them off breakers and it's um, not that bad of a job to do. I have also had to do the a cam chain tensioner. Um, they, the V8 engine has few of them. Um, there's only one you can really access with the engine in the car and it, it doesn't take much to do. You've just got to pull out the air box and then there's a 19 mil um, cap on it. Unscrew that, take it out, put the new one in, cap it back up. It is nice and simple. The hardest part is trying to find the combination of tools to actually do it because it's quite tight. But if you've got a mildly comprehensive fuel uh, toolkit, you'll be able to do it no problems. And it just just stops. It's sort of now and then you get a little bit of rattle on startup, and it just stops that. Now, if I had to buy an X5, what would I go? Would I go for the cheaper V8 or the slightly more expensive but cheaper to run? diesel and it's a tough one now because uh, diesel tends to be a lot more expensive than petrol the disparity isn't as clear-cut it used to be I was looking at doing a journey with this up to Scotland 460 miles and my diesel truck does 29 to the gallon or so and I worked out that it would have cost me 15 quid more to take this 4.4 litre V8 with 280 horsepower on the journey than my truck and you know 15 quid for another you know, eight hour journey 15 quid for more comfort more power more luxuries i don't think it's a bad price the interior on these is lovely this this is a 20 year old truck and there is not one sign of it being 20 years old there's not one horrible rattle there's nothing to even hint that this is a 20 year old truck with 128,000 miles on it it's so well made it's from the glory days of bmw it the, it shares a lot with the e39 bmw which i think is a lovely car so it feels just like that and smells just like that it's got the bmw the interior has so many just amazing things it has these seats these lovely leather seats that are just holding me in i've heated with 
the fire support that slides out because it's an M Sport. They haven't they haven't scrimped on this. There's lots of videos about on the differences between the facelift and the free facelift. I would go for a facelift. Um, they, I think they look a little bit better, for drive systems better, gearboxes are better. This is a five speed auto, they have the six speed and they're stronger. So if you're gonna do any sort of towing or if you are stupid enough to take it mildly off of them, then um, yeah, you're gonna want the better gearbox and drive chain in it. They also have more power. So the V8 goes from 280 to 318, which is actually quite a ridiculous number. Hope you enjoyed that short video on the X5. Um, sadly, if it does sell, that would, this will probably be the one and only video on it. But anyway, please like, subscribe, keep an eye out for the new car.